In the ancient days of mobile social media back in the 2010s, there was one app that ruled all the others, Instagram. Long before being dethroned by Snapchat and TikTok, Instagram changed the way people looked and shared their photos. It also changed digital photography forever. No longer could a photo just look like a photo. Now it had to have some cool color-changing filter to make it look cool and artsy. Honestly, this trend goes back a lot further than Instagram, but this mobile app made it easier for everyone to use. Being the hipster that I am, I was doing this long before the masses by using Photoshop Curves. The filters fell out of style as people started posting hashtag no filter, and today people hardly even use the filters on Instagram. Now it's just becoming a TikTok knockoff full of good-looking influencers trying to sell you stuff. The whole trend started with the idea of getting some photos to look more vintage or authentic back in the days of film photography. So to celebrate the decline of one of my favorite apps into nothing but a data mining and advertising platform, let's go ahead and copy some of these filters in Photoshop. But first, let's talk about our sponsor, NordVPN. Just kidding. Okay, so since I keep getting questions on this, let's go over this one more time. The photo I want to use is on my computer. I'm going to open up AppStream's home folder by clicking this folder button up here, and then I'm going to go to home folder. Once we get in our home folder, you click upload files. And then you can go to your downloads and pull in the picture that you want. Now it's on your AppStream home folder. Once you're inside Photoshop, you can go to open. To get this screen, just click right here where it says on your computer. And then uh, click this PC, home folder. And I look for the picture that I want to use. I chose a picture of the actors from the TV show OBX because What's better than making fake Instagram filters than having fake Outer Banksers? First thing I'm going to do is make some copies of the background. Right click, go to duplicate. It's up here. All right, now we have five layers. To do all of these filters, we are going to use the adjustments panel. And we are going to use one adjustment in particular. This adjustment is the curves adjustment. This is pretty much what any of these filters are doing. They are merely adjusting the curves in the different channels of red, green, and blue. So this button right here is one you want to make sure you know. Clicking this button says this adjustment affects all layers below, or if you click it, it only affects the one layer below it. We want to make sure this button is clicked because each one of these layers will only have one curve affecting it. Otherwise, if we leave this unclicked, this curve would affect all the layers underneath of it. We do not want that. The first filter I want to try and do is the Walden filter. This one is very low contrast. It involves a curvy red where we boost up some of the dark reds and we pull down some of the, the highlights or the mid-tone reds and then we boost up the white reds. You'll notice that instantly puts a color red color cast on everything. That's because we've raised the value of all of our red colors without adjusting any of the blue or green. Let's go to the green next. We're going to bring up this value, which will raise the darkest. It raises all of the colors, but it's raising these dark colors more. Because as you can see, the difference between here and here is a lot more than the difference between these light colors here and here. So it's really boosting all of our greens, but it's boosting the dark greens more so. So we're going to add a curve to it to give those high greens a little more boost. There we go. Now things are looking very strange. Our filter is not quite finished, so don't worry yet. Now we need to go to our blue filter. 
and finish this off. What we're going to do in our blue filter is really compress the values of blue by bringing this up and this down. And adjust to taste. There we go. That's looking pretty good, to be honest, as a copy of that filter. In the opacity of that layer, you can adjust it down some to, to reduce the effects. So 100% looks a little too much. Let's bring it down to something like 75. Now we've got the effects. If you toggle on and off the eyeball, you can see the difference. Cool. Those two are done. So I'm going to hide both those layers. I'm going to click back to this layer and let's do a different filter. OK, for this one, let's do the Hefe filter. And remember to check this box so that it only applies to this layer right below it. Now, this filter involves a different type of curve. It's more of an S curve, but it's about the same in each one of them. We could apply it in this RGB layer, but doing so isn't going to give us that same sort of effect. If you ever mess up, there's a little reverse sign. You can click it right there. OK, so for these reds, we're going to bring the darkness down on the dark reds. And on the light reds, we're going to bring it up some. And for the mids, let's get that midpoint right back to the normal midpoint where it normally was. Right there. Great. Let's do about the same thing for the greens. And then let's try the blues and adjust those until we get the desired effect. Now, if you notice, they're now kind of canceling each other out because we've raised them all in similar ways. So it's not a it's not an extremely heavy effect. And like before, we can raise and lower the opacity to adjust it. Toggle on and off the eyeball to see the effect. And there we go. One more down. And for this filter, I'd like to do the early bird filter. So to copy this one, we're going to need to select our reds first. And this one has a slight bump up here, somewhere between the mids and the highs. But the rest of it is more along here. I'm going to pull down the total greens there, but boost the rest of it somewhere around here. And for the blues, I'm going to lower the entire range by pulling up the, lowering down the highs and pulling up the darks. And then just play with it until I get a look kind of like what I want. If you go too high, it's going to get too blue. If you go too low, it's going to look really brown. We want something a little warm. There we go. That easy. Now I'm going to hide this layer. So I'll do the very last one. This one I'm going to try and do something that's not an Instagram filter, but it's another photo app that became popular for a hot minute. You've probably heard of it called Visco. Yes, I know what that is. I probably pronounced it wrong, but it's all good. I had to Google it, but we're good. Um, let's go ahead and try that one. I'm going to do this to the best of my ability. I've never actually used the app, but I've seen some pictures. So the way it looks to me is that there are a lot of reds going on in the darks. So let's boost up our reds in the darks but then grab up here around the mid-tones and bring it back down so that we have in our shadows and the dark areas like her hair, we have our reds boosted. Now let's go to our greens and pull those out of the dark so there's less green going on in the dark. But then we're going to bring it back up at the midpoint 
and then pull it down a little in the, the highlights, the white colors. And then let's go to our blues and basically leave the midpoint alone by clicking there and then lower the blues in the darks and lower the blues in the highlights. So this should give a teal looking color to our blues and our, our high our blues that are light, which kind of turns, you can see the sky turns from blue, kind of green. I can exaggerate it by doing this. And I could even pull this one down up here to make it happen more and pull it in here. And yeah, you could play around with it, but this is close to the, the same sort of effect. We have our dark colors are browner and redder and our light colors are tealer. To tie it all together and finish it all off, we need to show all of these on the same layer. So first, I'm going to remember that I forgot to put these to apply to only the layer below it. You'll notice because there's an arrow down here, but not here. So I click back there, click this arrow so that this only applies. Let's go ahead and turn on visibility to all our layers. There we go. Even the background layer. To get all of these into one photo, we are going to use layer masks so that only certain layers shine through in certain areas. Here's how we're going to do it. I'm going to come up to my top layer. I'm going to decide to use the selection marquee tool. So I'm going to click up here and I'm going to drag and I know that each of these need to be about 110 pixels height because the entire picture is around 550 pixels. Divide that by five, we get 110. So I'm going to go to about 110. You don't have to be pixel perfect. And then once I have that selected and I'm on the correct layer, I'm going to click this button down here, which will create a layer mask. And if you notice here, the white part is the part of this layer that's showing through. The black part is letting the layer below it show through. So now let's go down to that layer, do the same thing. I'm going to click and drag from, that wasn't a very good one. I'm going to try and get close to the spot where the other layer starts, come down to about 110 pixels, let go and create a layer mask. Go to the next layer. Let's do the same thing. Come down to about 110 pixels. Create a layer mask. And let's do the final one. All right, there we go. So you could see each of these little sections are where we were. The original is down here at the bottom. And then here are all the different filters we have. So once you can do this horizontally or you can do it vertically, it's up to you. Looking at it now, it appears that these filters are pretty similar. Uh, there's still a slight difference, but oh well. So yeah, that's your assignment for today. You are going to need to find an image and you will need to apply four different curves effects to it. Remember, the original will be your fifth one. Have fun with the way you chop it up. You can do it diagonally, vertically, Maybe if you get crazy, you could even do rings, concentric circles or something. But that's it. Have fun.